Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Upper St. Clair High School, home of tonight, the Lady Panthers, as the Lady Panthers in their second home contest of this 2009-2010 season host the Rams of Ringgold High School. This is a Section 1 contest. Each team comes in here having played one Section, sorry, Section 4 contest. Each team has come in having played one Section game already. Uh, Ringgold has lost to Bethel Park, and so far Upper St. Clair has beaten Cannon McMillan. My name is Kevin McGahey. I'll be with you all evening long. My videographer tonight is Caroline Cherup, and it's our pleasure to bring you this contest. Uh, Ringgold in here with a power, with a, a pretty powerhouse actually, with a three and one record coming in. So St. Clair's played one more game. We're in here at three and two. We'll get the starting lineups in just a second for Upper St. Clair. It's a upperclassman, a laden team. Taking the taking the tip off will be junior Tory Bishop. Also on the uh, starting lineup, Grace Highland is number 23. Number 22 is Taylor Gensler. Number 50 is senior Morgan Malinick. And uh, Haley Lohman Jr. is number five. Upper St. Clair comes up with the opening tap. Running right to left on your TV screen. We're glad you're with us tonight on Upper St. Clair Cable 7 for this girls basketball contest. That's Taylor Gensler right back out front. Haley Lohman now. It's a 2-3 zone by the Ringgold Lady Rams. Upper St. Clair can shoot over that like Grace Highland does right there. Morgan Malinick, though, with the rebound, gets it back to Haley Loman, swings it right back around to Grace Highland. Hands up a good shooting team on Morgan Malinick. Up and on, no good. Tory Bishop with a rebound up and in. Tory Bishop gets first blood for the Upper St. Clair Panthers in an early 2 0 lead. Upper St. Clair with a full court pressure. And it looks like Taylor Gensler probably called with a blocking foul. Indeed, it is Taylor Gensler. She's a junior. That's her first personal first team foul. We're barely 45 seconds into the game so far. 2 0 Upper St. Clair. Ringgold with the ball. Number two out front. That's Alena Rasanovic. Number 45 with the ball right now. That is Alina Selby. She is a senior, and she puts it up off the backboard. No good. Morgan Malinick. Cleans off the backboard, down the right side, Tory Bishop and Haley Lohman will set it up in the forecourt. Grace Highland, both Grace Highland and Haley Lohman, very good from the outside. Taylor Gensler from about 18 feet, rattles off the front of the rim, no good. Tapped and dragged out of there by Jamie Meltzer, number 12, the junior for Ringle. Ringle is a very big team. Lots of 5'11", no six-footers on this team, but we see a lot of 5'11", 5'10", players out there. Let's see what the Panthers can do to overcome that height advantage. 13th tab at the leech, and she dragged that back foot. Traveling violation sends the ball right back over to the Panthers. Still a 2-0 lead very early. This is the first quarter, 6.20 to go. Haley Lohman left side now, Grace Highland. She was playing the right just a second ago. Look like they flipped the zone. Flipped the offense rather. Haley Loman playing right. Grace Highland playing left. Back to Grace Highland. Thinks about the shot. Regold knows as they brought three players out front. Haley Loman this time. And drains it through from three. Haley Loman. Nothing but net and a 5-0 early Panther lead here. All right. Rosanovich down low. To Lena Selby, and she walks with us. So, oh, a couple of turnovers have given the Panthers a couple of early opportunities here. I don't think Ringgold's even gotten a shot off yet. With two minutes and 15 gone in quarter number one, Haley Lohman bringing it across the timeline. Gets it right back from Taylor Gensler. Grace Highland thought to shoot. That's not going to happen. Skip pass to Taylor Gensler. Skips right back to Grace Highland. Grace Highland open for three, off the front of the rim, no good, rebounded by Jamie Meltzer, the junior for Ringgold, double teamed and almost stolen by, by Haley Lohman. Not quite now, a three-pointer by Ringgold, rattles at the back of the rim, no good, that was Tori Gorn with that shot. Grace Highland quickly up the court and in, Grace Highland coast to coast, all by herself, well done Grace Highland. And St. Clair's off to a 7-0 lead. Three buckets, one's a three-pointer. Jamie Meltzer now. Tabitha Leach. It's a long, long three-point attempt by Alana Rosanovich. No good. 
grappled by Haley Lohman, but she traveled, and the ball belongs or kind of remains that down at this end anyway with Ringgold. Underneath, up and in, that's by Jamie Meltzer. Five foot, 10 inch junior, the first two for Ringgold. Four minutes, 30 left in the first quarter. And it's a seven, two, five point Panther lead. Looks to me like the Panthers are gonna do it from outside. Haley Lohman again drains it straight through. Haley Lohman from straight away. Two shots, two misses, two three, uh, makes rather, two three pointers and it's 10 to Panthers. Man-to-man -man pressure by St. Clair, and it's thrown away right in the hands of Grace Highland. She's got Haley Loman on her left. Passes down and up and off the rim. No good. Rebounded by Jamie Meltzer. For the Lady Rams, just over the hands of Haley Loman. It is tipped off. The, well done by Haley. Maybe the smallest person on the court got a hand on that. It sails off the fingertips of Alana Rosanovich, and the ball will belong to Upper St. Clair. Well, some pretty good end-to-end -end action here. We're halfway through the first quarter. So far, the scoring is divided between three Upper St. Clair players already. Haley Lohman, you've seen with two gorgeous three-pointers. Huge high arc. Those things are drawing rain. Six points for Haley Lohman. Grace Highland has two of that layup she had just a minute ago. And Tori Bishop drew first blood. She's got the other two for St. Clair. That all adds up to ten. And only one personal foul called so far in the game. That's against Taylor Gensler, the junior number 22 for St. Clair. I'm sure this isn't the way the Ringgold staff had this uh, game planned out from the beginning, but right now it looks pretty good for the Lady Panthers with a 2-0 lead. 10-2 lead, rather. And let's see if there's any changes. No, same players we started the game with. Morgan Melendic, Taylor Gensler, Haley Loman, Tori Bishop, and Grace Highland for the Panthers. Panthers ball. Taylor Gensler looking for some help though. The wrinkle shifting into a man to man. They now know that that zone defense didn't work against the hot shooting of that for St. Clair Panthers. Knocked away. Knocked away again. That was in the hands of Alina Selby. Taylor Gensler ended up coming out with that one. Alina Selby, a little too anxious to get down the lane. It lost control and it comes right back to the Lady Panthers. Grace Highland plays the right side now. Man to man defense. Haley Loman looking for some help. This is going to rely on some picks, some cuts. Morgan Malinick out high. Grace Highland dribbling down the lane with the right hand up and over the rim. No good. Comes down in the hands of Alina Selby. Jump ball called. Tory Bishop. Possession arrow goes Ringgold's way. First substitution for the Lady Rams. Number 32, Jete Mead, a 5'11 senior on the floor. Number 32, Jete Mead in for Ringgold. It's a tall team the Lady Rams have here. Jamie Meltzer with a long shot off the front of the room. No good. Morgan Malenik. Down with a St. Clair rebound. And so far, Lady Rams only two points this entire quarter long. 2.45 to go first quarter. Eight point Panther lead 10-2. Morgan Malenik likes not to take the shot. Haley Lohman could and chooses not to. Tori Bishop spins down low. Morgan Malenik up and uh, up and under move. Didn't quite work. Rebounded by Al Alana Rosanovich. Oh, fumbled a little bit by Jamie Meltzer. She could have taken that one. Long three-pointer by Alana Rosanovich, the senior, 5'11 senior. Three-pointer cuts the lead now down to five. Panthers 10-5. Just over two minutes to go. First quarter. Stolen away by, well, pretty good steal. Actually, by Tori Gorn, the senior guard for Ringgold. She dribbled it on the sidelines. The ball stays with St. Clair. Something tells me this man to man defense is going to give the Panthers fits. Haley Lohman dribbles into the forecourt. Another long three pointer rolls off the back of the rim, and Morgan Lindick had a shot at it. She did not come down with it. Jamie Meltzer did. And it's the Lady Rams ball again in the forecourt. Long three-point attempt again drained through Alana Rosanovich from exactly the same spot. 
That seems to be her shot. And now suddenly that lead's been cut down to two. Morgan Malinick on the baseline chooses not to shoot. Back to that 2-3 zone. No, still man-to-man -man defense by Ringle. Just how the offense was set up. Man-to-man. -man. Interesting pass. Morgan Malinick off the rim. No good. Troy Bishop with a rebound up and over the rim. And that'll be a personal foul on the Lady Rams. Tory Bishop will go to the line. Let's see who this one's on. Be on Terry, a uh, Tory Gorn rather. That's her first first team foul. Tory Bishop though to the line for the Panthers. The Panthers a good shoot, a good free throw shooting team. First attempts of the night, it's up and it is short off the front of the rim. No good. She'll get one more. Substitution for Ringo, number 11 on the floor. Angela Selby, a sophomore guard. Troy Bishop rattles off the rim, rebounded by Jate Mead. And our Lady Rams are off and running. Pretty nice uh, up and in by Jamie Meltzer. Four points for her, and this game is tied at 10. Panthers had an eight point lead just a minute ago. One minute to go. First quarter, and this man to man defense seems indeed to have stymied the Panthers a little bit off Haley Loman's hands, off Angela Selby for Ingold and out of bounds. This man-to-man -man will cut down on the outside shooting. That's exactly what it's done. Tory Bishop at the free throw line. Morgan Malinick. Back at the tail against her. Had a notion to shoot. Did not. Grace Highland to the bucket. Up and off the rim. No good. Panthers are getting a lot of good layups. Good penetration shots. But they are falling off the backboard and rim. No good. And that one belongs to the Lady Rams. Jate Mead will be bringing that in, and Alana Rosanovic across the timeline. Angela Selby down low, and she will not take the three-pointer. Alana Rosanovic does and drains yet another one. Three three-pointers, nine points for Alana Rosanovic, and the Panthers have gone dry a little bit here. It's an 11-0 run for the Ringgold Rams. Lady Rams, ever since they put that man-to-man -man defense on, Panthers have not scored. It's a turnover by Taylor Genser, giving the Lady Rams one more shot with 16 seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. 13-10 Rams. Up and off the front of them, Tory Bishop with the rebound. That shot was by Tory Gorn. Panthers have five, four seconds to go. What can Grace Island put up a long three-pointer? She does, and it is off the rim, no good. That was close. She had a pretty good look at it. But it falls off, no good. And the first quarter ends with the Ringgold Lady Rams holding a 13-10 lead. Scoring for the Panthers, two three-pointers by Haley Lohman, six points. Grace Highland, one bucket for two. Tory Bishop. One two-pointer and 0 for 2 from the line for two points. That all adds up to 10. Nobody in any serious foul trouble on either side, but Taylor Genser, the only one with a personal so far for the Panthers. She has one. And and for the Lady Rams of Ringgold, also they only have two, well, they only have two scores. Alana Rosanovic, Rosanovic rather, this 5'11 senior has three gorgeous three-pointers, long ones too for nine points, and the junior, Jamie Meltzer, number 12, two buckets for four points. Only one personal foul called for Ringgold in the first quarter. That was on senior Tory Gunn. So that's where we stand right now. It's 13-10, Lady Rams. Two substitutions for the Panthers going into quarter. Number two, number 24 is Lauren Rita. She's a junior. Number 42 is senior Rachel Broadland. Let's see if we can wake up the Panthers. Scoring offense here. Off this man-to-man. -man. This Lady Rams stick with this man-to-man -man and it tapped away by Angela Selby of the Lady Rams. Ball stays with the Panthers. 13-10 Ringgold. Haley Lohman in the backcourt. Gets the man-to-man -man half court defense. That's Lauren Rita on the right. Morgan Malinick up high looking for help. 
Panthers being very patient against this man-to-man -man defense, looking for a gap, looking for a mistake. Rachel Brawlin with the ball. Keeps it, Rachel. Uh, Grace Highland with it. Layup to the hoop, another one, another good looking layup. Falls away, uh, Rachel Broadland though with the ball and timeout called St. Clair. Rachel Broadland got kind of pinned underneath her own basket. Having to come through with a pretty good rebound. I thought maybe she got pushed out of bounds, but timeout was called first. It'll be just a 30 second timeout for coach Ernie Coots to settle down the troops and see what they can do to penetrate this pretty good man to man defense the Lady Rams have been putting on tonight. Panthers defense hasn't been bad, but the long-range shooting of the Ringgold Rams is what has ruled the day for them. It's given them this 13-10 lead. Now, that was just a shorty to make sure Blaine St. Clair maintained possession of the ball. It'll be Lauren Rita taking the ball out underneath the Panthers basket. Not much in an inbounds play, and indeed is slapped away by Ringgold and gathered in by... Jete Mead, who still has it with the left hand, into the Panther defense and slapped away by Lauren Rita, gathered in by Haley Lohman, quickly up the right side, Haley Lohman to the bucket, and that'll be, should be a blocking. <laughs> Offensive foul called. Well, that's pretty interesting because the defense was nowhere close to being set. I guess they ruled the position call on that. She was not set, but did have possession. Uh, position rather on the defense and it is a, an offensive foul St. Clair possession goes over to Ringgold still 13-10 6.55 to go second quarter Jate Mead down low layup off the rim and good Jate Mead's first two and it's a five point Ringgold run and a 13-0 run 15-10 lead rather and a 13-0 run for the Ringgold Rams. This man-to-man -man defense giving the Panthers fits. Tipped away again. That's why you play hands-up defense, kids, if you're watching tonight. But then there's Grace Highland with the steal. Can she get it in this time? That's a pretty good layup. And with the left hand up and in, Grace Highland takes care of business coast to coast again. Her second bucket, four points tonight for Grace. Lead down to three, 15-12 Ringgold. Gorgeous little spin move by Alina Selby, her first two. 17-12, Lady Rams, six minutes to go, second quarter. Susan McLean in the game, number 13, I missed that substitution. Morgan Linick with a wild shot. Didn't bring much, rebounded by a ring goal. That's stolen away by Grace Highland and kept in. Rachel Broadland with it, gives to Susan McLean. Off she goes, Lauren Rita from the left side. Up and no good, no foul called either. Ringgold again this time. Another three-pointer. The hot outside shooting Tabitha Leach, or sorry, Jamie Meltzer rather, number 12 this time. Four three-pointers tonight for Ringgold and it's an eight-point Lady Rams lead. 5-10 to go first half. Susan McLean finds Morgan Lenick. Grace Highland, that'll be a two if it goes. It does not. Rattles off the rim. Rebounded by Angela Selby. Four Lady Rams, and here they come again. That one, not too sure where that one was headed, but it sails long out of bounds. Substitutions back. Two starters back in. Number 22, Taylor Gensler back in. The junior forward. And Tori Bishop, the junior, number 44. She's the center. Back in, Panthers still have not solved this man-to-man -man defense. The man-to-man -man pressure the Lady Rams have put on. Substitution for the Lady Rams, by the way, number 33 is on, that's Emily Schmidt, she's a junior. Taylor Gensler has the ball slapped away from her. Jimmy Meltzer again with the ball. Given away, Grace Highland again from the right side. Puts the ball up, no good. Tori Bishop also a wild one, no good. And th two offensive rebounds, three shots. And that's the way it's been in this first half for the Lady Panthers. Pretty good inside shots and not much to show for it. And that was Emily Schmidt. The junior just came on the floor. Part of this tall, tall team that the Lady Rams have got. 
There are two sisters on this team, both six-footers, Emily and Josie Schmidt. They've got four who check in at 5'11". A lot of height on this Ringgold Rams squad, and it shows all of a sudden because not only can they play underneath, they can shoot from outside too. Right now it's a 10-point Lady Rams lead at 22-12 with 4.13 to go first half. Alana Rosanovich for the Lady Rams leads all the scores with nine. Jamie Meltzer, number 12, the junior, has three buckets total of seven points. Jete Mead, number 32, Emily Schmidt, 33, and 44, Alina Selby in with one bucket each. And so far, the Panthers have been outscored in this quarter, nine to two. And have as yet been unable to solve that man-to-man -man defense. Grace Island. Easing the ball across the timeline. Halfway through quarter number two. Lauren Rita looking for help. Finds it with Susan McLean down low. Taylor Gensler to the hoop. Knocked away by Alina Selby. Possession stays with the Panthers. Substitution number two. Lena Rosanovich back in. She'll substitute for Jamie Meltzer. Take a quick breather. Grace Highland with a long three-point attempt. And good Grace Highland. Yes, Grace Highland now takes the team lead seven points. Cuts the lead to seven. Let's see what the Panthers have got for some defense here. Pretty good shooting on that part of Ringgold so far. Panthers have gone to a zone. It's 2-3 zone. Another decent shot. That is Alina Selby. Her second bucket, four points tonight for Alina. Nine-point Ringgold lead. It's 24-15. Susan McLean around the defense. Pulls up. Finds Taylor against her for help. Lauren Rita out high. Tori Bishop at the free throw line, and there's Taylor against her. Rattles in and out. Could have been, should have been. Hit the rim twice, but nothing for Taylor against her. That then she commits the personal foul. That's her second, third team foul. The Lady Rams with the ball. This is, of course, Alana Rosanovich getting across the timeline. Panthers back to man to man. They showed the zone for just a second and it pays off. Tory Bishop with the steal. Panthers bringing it back to now pull up. They pull up. Tory Bishop down low. Will she take the long shot? No. Knocked away and gathered in. Tory Bishop took her eye off it for just a second. Had it stolen away by Alina Selby. That one was headed down low to Emily Schmidt. But looks like Lauren Rita got a hand in there. That's Lauren Rita's first four team fouls. Morgan Malinick, the senior back in, and Rachel Starr, first time we've seen her tonight. She's a senior as well, number 35. She will give Lauren Rita a break. It's a nine point Lady Rams lead at 24 15. 2.33 to go, first half. Rattles off the rim, no good. That was Alina Selby. With that shot, Susan McClay now. Rachel Starr. Susan McClay has the ball knocked away, gathered in by Tory Bishop. Morgan Blenick, Tory Bishop underneath and blocked, and we'll get the personal foul out of that. Nice run to the hoop by Tory Bishop. That's a number 33. That's Emily Schmidt. That's her first. Only the second team foul for the Lady Rams. Tori Bishop at the line, shooting two. First one is up. Rattles off the rim. No good. Second one is up, and also off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Alina Selby for Ringgold, and here they come right side. That one was headed, Emily Schmidt didn't make it that far, gathered in, and Ringgold comes up with it. Three-point attempt by Alana Rosanovich, no good. Rebounded by Susan McLean of the Upper St. Clair Lady Panthers. 1.45 to go first half. Panthers needing some points, Tory Bishop to the hoop. Comes right back out. 
Morgan Malinic trapped in the corner. Heard a slap all the way up here. And nothing called there. Rachel Starr on the left side. Likes not to go to the hoop. Ringgold all over the Panthers. No fouls being called. Morgan Malinic up and in. Finally, we get one. Morgan Malinic, her first bucket. Let's see who this foul is on. Jamie Meltzer commits that personal, rather, her first third team foul. Morgan Malinic at the line to complete, to try to complete anyway, the three point play. They're rattling out. That's about the fourth one we've seen that has gone down and out. Panthers 0 for 5 from the line tonight. It's a seven point Ringgold lead 24 17. Jate Mead back in the game for Ringgold. Nice up and under move, and another one by Shate Mead. She gathers it in and shoves it back up and in the bucket. That's her second bucket, four points tonight for Shate Mead that leads back to nine for Ringgold. Just under a minute to go now, first half. Grace Highland. Probably intended to use all the time that's left in this half. Grace Highland, left side. 35 seconds to go first half. Grace Highland again and dribbles around the defense and it's slapped away. Lots are reaching in being uh, going uncalled here. 23 seconds left. Ringo rams to the ball, comes out, and it's in the hands of Tori Gunn. Lana Rosanovich, and she sails out of bounds behind Tori Gunn. 14 seconds left. Panthers will get one more shot to cut down this nine point lead. It'll be Rachel Starr bringing the ball into Grace Highland. 14 seconds. 10. Eight seconds now. Six seconds. Morgan we need to do something with Rachel Starr now with four. Grace Highland, two seconds long, three-pointer. Oh, right back of the rim, no good. That one looked pretty good from where I was sitting, but it rattles off the back of the rim, no good. And the first half ends with the Ringo Lady Rams leading 26-17. We'll take a quick halftime break. Stay with us, everybody, and we'll be right back for half number two. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Kevin McGahee back with you as long as well as my videographer camera person tonight is Caroline Cherup. And we're here bringing you tonight's section four girls basketball contest between the Upper St. Clair Lady Panthers and the visiting Ringgold Lady Rams. So far in the first half, the Lady Rams have had the better part of it. It's a 26-17 Rams lead. It's been pretty much end-to-end -end action. Very few personal fouls to break up the action. But right now, leading scorers for the uh, Lady Rams, the senior number two, Alana Rasanovich, with nine three gorgeous three-pointers. She had to make that happen. Jamie Meltzer, junior number 12, three buckets, seven points. Jate Mead, the senior number 32, has two buckets for four points. Alina Selby, 45, the senior, two buckets also for four points. And Emily Schmidt, the six-foot, two-inch junior, number 33, also in there with two. No free throw attempts by the Lady Rams. Three personal fouls. One for each of Jamie Meltzer, and that's number 12, Tori Gorn, number 25, and Emily Schmidt, 33. For the Panthers, all, the, the scoring done by four players. Grace Highland, the senior guard, leads all scores with seven. Three buckets, one of those is a three-pointer. Haley Lohman, two three-pointers in the first quarter. She's got six. Tori Bishop, one bucket, the first one of the game for two. And Morgan Malenik, the senior, also with two. Panthers, unfortunately, 0 for 5 from the line. And usually a pretty good free-throw shooting team. No real foul trouble for the Panthers either. Taylor Gensler, the junior, number 22, has two. Lauren Rita, number 24, junior, with one. And Haley Lohman, the junior guard, number five, also with one. That all adds up to 26 and 17. And we'll see what Coach Ernie Kuntz has in his bag of tricks to help beat this man-to-man -man defense that has been given the, the Upper St. Clair Lady Panthers fits all night long since the Lady Rams went to it. They started the game with a 2-3 zone. Panthers found they could shoot easily over that, but have not been able to solve this tenacious man-to-man -man defense that the Lady Rams have put on. It'll be Panther, actually Ring Rams ball, excuse me, Lady Rams ball to start the second half and all five starters are on except for Jatay Mead. She didn't start the game originally. She's in now. 
Tabitha Leach, the only original starter who's not on. Lady Rams with the ball to start off. Morgan Linick knocks it away, but steps on the end line, out of bounds. It'll, the ball will remain in the hands of Ringo. Jamie Meltzer taking the ball out underneath the Ringo basket. It's man-to-man -man defense by the Panthers, even on the inbound. Comes way long. Troy Bishop with a hand on it and keeps possession. But she has it knocked away by Alina Selby, who was the target of the original inbound pass. Haley Loman bringing the ball across the half court line. Grace Highland on the left. It is indeed that man to man defense still by Ringgold. It's with this tall team that's given the Panthers fits. There's a bunch of 5'11 and 6 foot players on this team and the Panthers just not big enough to get around them. Or over them. There's Taylor Gensler. Finds Troy Bishop down low. Spin move up and under. Finds Morgan Linick from the left side up and no good. And again, Panthers have had a lot of these layup chances that just have plain not fallen. Jamie Meltzer has it knocked out of bounds. Ball stays with Ringgold. Panthers have got an excellent penetration down low. But maybe it's because the Rams, Lady Rams are so tall, we have just been, they've not been falling. 7.14 to go, third quarter. No scoring yet in quarter number three. Kick ball out of bounds by Grace Highland. Jate Mead uh, off her hands and comes actually down to the hands of Tori Gurn. Alina Selby back to Tori Gurn, long three-point attempt and swishes through the long range shooting by the Lady Rams. That's five three-pointers tonight for the Lady Rams. And that lead is now as large as it's been all night. It's the largest of the night, I should say, rather. 12-point lead, Tori Bishop down low, up and around the rim and, oh, rattles off. That's a bad break. Grace Highland with the scoop up and no good. Jate Mead rips off the rebound. That one hung up. The Tor Bishop the whole shot held under him a long time. That's what we hoped it would do. Jamie Meltzer with that layup. Nine for Jamie Meltzer, and it's a 14-point Ringgold lead. Taylor Gensler finds Tory Bishop down low. Tory Bishop handed up. Probably should have kept it. Grace Highland with a three-pointer. Rattled that one home. Grace Highland. Her second three-pointer, 10 points for Grace. First player in double figures tonight for either team. With 10, and the lead is 11. A long, about a 30-foot three-point attempt. Dragged out of there by Morgan Linick. Quickly across the timeline. Hands off to Haley Lohman. Finds Troy Bishop down low. Yep. Jate Mead. A little bit of habeas grabis there. Tori Bishop didn't got, did not get the chance to put the shot up. She will instead get two free throws. That is the first personal foul for Jate Mead. First team foul. Tori Bishop at the line, shooting two. That one drains home. Nicely done, good form, good result. Three points tonight for Tori Bishop. Rattles off and around. Been several of those tonight by the Panthers. That really should have been in and did not make Elena Selby to the hoop. No good. Tory Bishop rips off the rebound. Another personal foul call. Let's see who this one's on. This one's on Alina Selby for the Ringo Lady Rams. That's her first, second team foul. Panthers maintain possession. It's a 10-point lead for the Lady Rams at 31-21. 5.30 to go. Third quarter. Haley Lohman spins away. Taylor Gensel sees Troy Bishop down low there. Very nicely done. Troy Bishop finally escaped that man-to-man -man defense. And that's five points tonight for Troy Bishop. Panthers back within eight. Knocked away by Morgan Malinic and a traveling violation called as Alana Rosanovich fell over Morgan Malinic. 
Tabitha Leach back in. She's a starter. We haven't seen her since um, early in the second quarter. St. Clair with a chance to cut this lead down to maybe six. Long skip past Grace Highland with a three-point attempt and down. Grace Highland way up and down. Three three-pointers for Grace. Six points this quarter, total of 13, and the Ringgold lead is down to five. Timeout called by a Ringgold. Panthers found a way to score over that man-to-man -man defense. Nine points this quarter, six of them from the hands of Grace Highland with two gorgeous three-pointers. Grace now has 13 points to lead all Panthers scores. Tori Bishop with the other points for this for this half, she's got one for two from the line and a bucket for three, total of five. Haley Lohman still in there with six points here, but she hasn't scored since the first quarter. For the Ringgold Rams this quarter, Jamie Melzer's got two. That bring her, brings her total to nine to match Alana Rosanovich. And the other one is from Alina Selby, number 45, the senior with a three-pointer. She has a total of seven. 31-26, five-point Ringgold lead, 4.45 to go, third quarter. Alina Selby, and she did. She walked. She went up and down with that ball. And that turnover sends the ball right back to the Panthers. Let's see if they can put another one down. Hope that timeout didn't affect the Panthers' rhythm here because they were in a really good one. Haley Lohman to Morgan Malinick. Grace Highland. Morgan Malenik, spin move up and in with the left hand, Morgan Malenik. Nice little spin move and a scoop shot cuts the lead to three. Panthers back in. Well, that was kind of interesting. Alana Rosanovich lost the ball, but it went off Morgan Malenik's foot. Kick ball called. Ringgold maintains possession. 4.18 now to go. Just about halfway through quarter number three. The old in-out move worked pretty nicely. Well, that also worked nicely. That ball went way out, came right back in to Tori Gorn, but it went off her fingertips, out of bounds, and Panthers get the possession. And a chance to cut the lead to one, or a, they could tie it up here. Just now, four minutes to go, third quarter, 31-28, Ringgold. Haley Lohman actually had a full half court. She could have just dribbled right down to, right down Main Street. She chose not to. And let pass to Troy Bishop, knocked away. And that'll probably be a personal on that. Yeah, Taylor Gensch looks like she grabbed a little bit of arm. And that is three fouls, three personals on Taylor Gensler. The first team foul, but three on Taylor Gensler. She'll need to take a break, I would think. Yes, that's indeed. Susan McLean, senior number 13, is on the floor. Emily Schmidt, the six foot two junior, on the floor for the Lady Rams. Didn't let pass too much. Angela Selby, she's six two, she's not six eight. She couldn't have gotten a hold of that one. And with 3.30 now to go, third quarter, Panthers get another shot to close this gap. Panthers have outscored the Rams 11 to 5. Long three pointer. Susan McLean made a good effort to bring that one back. Could not. And that one goes right back to Ringgold. Susan McLean knocks that ball out of bounds. That is indeed why you play hands up defense, kids. Emily Schmidt has got about seven inches on Morgan Malinick. She's going to have to do that with her body. Oh, nice tap away by Morgan Malinick, and it's off indeed the fingertips of Tori Gorn and out of bounds. Panthers again with a chance to close this gap. Third consecutive trip down. Tori Bishop now skip past to Haley Lohman, dribbles into the lane and with the left hand up, no good. 
Held ball on the possession. St. Clair maintains it. It's good recovery by Tory Bishop and now 2.45 to go. Panthers with a fourth now attempt to cut this lead from three to something else. Tory Bishop finds Morgan Linick in the lane with the right hand up and no good. Tory Bishop got it back down, has it again up and in. That should count and she goes to the line for a three point play. Tory Bishop doing some damage underneath. And Emily Schmidt tagged with that personal foul. That's her second, third team foul this half. Tori Bishop. And it's in with a three point play and that ties this game where the Panthers were down by 15 not too long ago. We're all knotted up at 31 and almost stolen away by Susan McLean. And indeed stolen away by Susan McLean off the hands of Alana Rosanovich for the Lady Rams. Panthers now with possession to try and get this lead back, which we've not seen since the first quarter. The coach Ernie Coons has got his charge. They figured out how to beat this man-to-man -man pressure that was giving them all kinds of trouble in the first half. Susan McLean with a drive and in with the right hand. Her first points of the game and they up for St. Clair. Lady Panthers have the lead at 33. 31, two minutes to go, third quarter. Knocked away by Morgan Malenik. That was headed to Emily Schmidt. And Emily Schmidt is down. I regret I did not see what happened. I was looking the other way. She might have knocked heads together with Tori Bishop. She's holding the side of her head to Temple. Looks like that may be exactly what happened. I suspect she'll take a quick break to clear her senses and I imagine we'll see her back. You can't have a valuable six foot plus player like that sitting on the bench. Meanwhile, it is Ringgold Ball. Number 32, Chitang B is for Ringgold. And Jate Mead comes back in for the Lady Rams. We've seen her before. She's number 32. She's got a couple of buckets of her own this game. Inbound pass. Oh, no, stolen by Susan McLean. Grace Highland has it. Gets it up ahead to Haley Lohman across the timeline. Susan McLean for three. Way up and off the rim for the rim. No good. But Morgan Lindick with a rebound. Tori Bishop puts it up and she'll get fouled again. Jate Mead this time, Tori Bishop, a force underneath for the Panthers tonight. Jate Mead, that'll be her second, four team fouls. And Tori Bishop at the line, shooting two. And down, rim back board and good for Tori Bishop. Three point lead now for the Panthers at 34-31, Tori gets one more. It's up and it's down. Tori had some issues in the first half going over for four, but she's four for five here in the third quarter. Eight points for Tori Bishop, and it's a four point Panther. They almost stolen away by Morgan Malenik. Long three pointer, no good also. Falls back into Ringgold hands. Jate Mead with a little layup. Pretty good inlet pass. And Jate Mead breaks this long Ringgold scoring drought. I'm not big keeping track, but the Panthers scored a ton of points in a row. Susan McLean fakes the shot and has a little, little, nice little baseline jumper. Tori Bishop again up and in. Tori Bishop with the rebound and a putback. Tori Bishop, 10 points. Jate Mead with her third personal, five team fouls, four point Panther lead, Tori Bishop at the line to see if she can add one more. She does indeed. Tori Bishop, five for six in this third quarter and it's a five point Panther lead at 38-33. Just over a minute to go, third quarter.
<laughs> some, some, some chattering from the bench. That's a personal foul on Susan McLean, her first, second team foul. I think that's not what the coaching staff had in mind. Ringgold retains possession, still just a minute to go. Third quarter, down low, and spin move over Tory Bishop and in. That one's by Alina Selby. Nine points for Alina. 48 seconds now, third quarter. Panthers lead by three. Tory Bishop spin move. She's challenging Jate Mead now. She wants to get that fourth foul on her. That did not fall after a pretty good move. Alina Selby up and in again. Two back to back. 11 now for Alina Selby. Ringo back now within one with a little short run of their own. And I see the index finger in the air. Panthers will hold for the final shot of the third quarter. Grace Highland off. Not off the hands of Jamie Meltzer. She just sailed it out of bounds into the St. Clair bench with 18 seconds to go. The Lady Rams will get the last shot of the quarter. 14 seconds left. Angela Kelly to Jete Me. Tory Bishop with the block. Well done. Six seconds to go. Oh, Jamie Meltzer stole it away. Tory Bishop again, and now the blocking foul is called. Tory should have had a little bit more patience, probably get it in the hands of a St. Clair player, but. It is Tori Bishop. It's her first personal, third, only three team fouls in the second half. Jamie Meltzer, and this is the first three free throws of the night for Ringo. That one's up and in for Jamie Meltzer. Ten points on the night for Jamie. She'll get one more. And we are all tied up at 38. Still tied at 30, Morgan Melinick with a rebound. Grace Highland will not get the shot off. And that's how we end a frenetic third quarter by the upper St. Clair Lady Panthers. We're all tied up at 38 going into quarter number four. That was a mighty good quarter for the Lady Panthers. 21 points scored in that quarter. That's a kind of a total we were expecting to see and hadn't seen in a while. A lot of that damage was done by Tory Bishop. 11 points in the quarter, 13 on the night. Three buckets and five of six from the line. Two three-pointers by Grace Highland, giving her 13 on the night. To tie Tory Bishop for the team lead. Morgan Malinick chimed in with one, and Susan McLean chimed in with one. Only one player in any serious foul trouble for the Panthers. That's Taylor Gensler, number 22, the junior. She's got three. The team foul situation is pretty good. We only have three. And for the Ringo Lady Rams, Jete Mead, number 32, who is not on the floor right now, has three personals. Emily Schmidt, the six foot two junior, also with two, also not on the floor. Lady Rams have possession to start the third quarter. Knocked away by Grace Highland. Possession stays with the Lady Rams. Angela Selby. Sophomore guard on the right side. Alana Rosanovich. Down low, that is the sister. Uh, now, uh, well. You didn't want that spin move from number 45, Alina Selby, and the personal foul called on Haley Lohman. That's her second. Four team fouls, long three-point attempt. Way up and way down by Angela Selby. Well, that's the first time we've seen one of those out of Ringgold in a while. They've got a lot of them tonight. But the first in a while, Susan McLean with a little shift move, and that one comes up short. Rebounded by Alana Rosanovich for the Lady Rams, and she hustles it up across the timeline. Well, down low, that was Tabitha Leach with her first two of the night. And that foul is on Rachel. Yeah, that was on Rachel Broadland, number 42. Her first five team fouls now for both teams. And just like that, Ringgold has themselves a six-point lead. 
Panthers need to get back on track here. It's been a while now since they scored. Six point lead, 44, 38, Ringle. Grace Highland with a spin move and the layup and up and in. Grace Highland taking care of business and taking it to the hoop. 15 points for Grace Highland to lead all scores tonight. Leads down to four. Trapping defense. Oh, she does. Ripped out of there by Morgan Lenick. Held ball and possession to the Panthers. Just over a minute gone, fourth quarter. Four point Lady Rams lead at 44 40. Haley Lohman across the timeline with that ball. Susan McLean eludes her defender. Chooses not to shoot. Haley Lohman could and does. Front of the net in. Just gets a good shooter's roll. Haley Lohman, first shot we've seen out of her since the fourth quarter, or first quarter rather. And the lead is back down to one. 44 43 Ringgold. Alina Selby down low. Two. Tabitha Leach again with two. Morgan Malinick now for the Lady Panthers. Pretty good action here. The scoring <laughs> lids have come off these rims. Haley Lohman chooses not to shoot. She backs it up. Looking for some help down low. Ringgold still with that man-to-man -man defense. Panthers did figure out how to score in the third quarter off it. Susan McLean finds Tory Bishop down low, up and in. Assist and good eyes. All right, I beg your pardon, that's Rachel Broadland, not Tory Bishop. Rachel Broadland with that two. And the lead is one. No good, but rebounded and back in the hands of Alina Selby for a little 15 foot Alina Selby. 13 points on the night for Alina Selby. Three point Lady Rams lead, 48 45. Five and a half minutes to go. Procession stays with the Panthers. Morgan Malnick had it knocked away. Tori Bishop is back on the floor, number 44. She took a quick break. She had that awesome third quarter. My guess is she'll play the rest out unless she gets in some sort of foul trouble. Susan McLean on the left side. Morgan Malinick. Well, she turned around and right standing there was Angela Selby and a tied up ball. Possession belongs to Ringgold though. Still ball possession, Ringgold. Alana Rosanovic. Long pass down low, Alina Selby. Way short, Morgan. No, Morgan. Morgan with her sister Angela came down with that rebound, and that is Jamie Meltzer. Another offensive rebound, Angela Selby for Ringgold. Panthers need some rebounds right here. Whoa! Whoa, meaning I heard two heads clank together just now. That was Grace Highland, and she saddled with a personal foul. That is Grace Highland's first, but it's now 16 fouls for the Panthers. Next personal foul sends Ringgold into the one and bonus. Taylor Genso back on the floor. First time we've seen her in a while. And that down low for Tabitha Leach again. Three buckets for her this quarter. She's come out of nowhere to score seven points. Lead is five, 50 to 45. Taylor Genser with it. Finds Haley Lohman down low. Tori Bishop, yes indeed. Haley Lohman with the inlet to Tori Bishop. 15 points for Tori Bishop. Three point Ringo lead, 4.23 to go in this contest. Awkward pass and down low again. Tabitha Leach again does not make that one. Gets her own rebound. Back out to Angela Selby to her sister Alina. That's up and in. Tori Bishop picks up that personal foul, her second. And Alina Selby at the line to try to complete the three point play. She does, and that Ringo lead is back to six. 53 47, halfway through quarter number four. Susan McLean finds Taylor Gensler in the lane. At, well, hassled by that man-to-man -man defense, Taylor Gensler travels. 
Turnover sends the ball back to Ringgold. Panthers needing some defense right now, and a couple of rebounds would be nice. Alana Rosanovich. Across to Jamie Meltzer, across the timeline. That one almost sailed right out of bounds. Stolen away by Grace Highland and a clear shot to the basket. Let's see a foul. No foul. Shoved into the wall. No foul called. Grace Highland, though, takes it to the hoop. 17 points for Grace Highland. Leads down to four. 325 to go, third uh, fourth quarter rather. Well, the inlet pass down to Elena Selby sails off her hands out of bounds. Panthers now with a shot to cut into this lead. Full timeout called by Ringgold. Well, out of nowhere in this quarter has come Tabitha Leach, number 13. She was actually one of the starters, but we did not see her in the middle part of the game. She's come back to score three buckets and one for one from the line. Seven points for her tonight. Also, Alina Selby, two buckets and one free throw in this quarter alone. Five points for her. A total of 16 tonight. And her sister, Angela Selby, sophomore guard, has a three-pointer. 15 points scored already by Ringgold in this fourth quarter to lead 53-49. For the Panthers, though, four points scored this quarter by Grace Highland. Haley Loman, you saw that gorgeous three-pointer by her and a bucket each by Rachel Broadland, number 42, and Tori Bishop. Tori with that two has 15 on the night after an 11-point <laughs> third quarter. Let's see if she can come back and do that again in the fourth here. Grace Highland leads all Panther scores with 15. A little bit of foul trouble. Now Taylor Gensler, number 22, still has those three personal fouls. Haley Lohman, number five, the junior, uh, junior guard with two. Tori Bishop, the junior center, also with two. Uh, Panthers in the bonus. Ringgold Rams not yet. They've only got five personal fouls. That is to say the next St. Clair foul sends the Ringgold Rams into the one-on-one -on -one bonus. It is Panther ball. Grace Highland to Haley Lohman. Gently bringing the ball across the timeline with 3.15 to go, fourth quarter. Haley Lohman, they still, Ringgold still with that man to man defense. Panthers working for a good one, looking for using up some time. Looking for a cutter, look for somebody to get open underneath. Tori Bishop at the free throw line. 2.45 to go now there. That's what they were hoping for, over the back. That was Alina Selby, her second. Team foul number six. Now both teams will be in the shooting bonus with all subsequent fouls, four point lead. Tori Bishop. Well, it was a hell ball. One of the Ringgold players, I couldn't see who was, got a hand on it. Tori Bishop went up and down with it. That's a traveling violation. Sends the ball over to the Lady Rams with their four-point lead. It's 53-49 Rams. Hey, Lee Loman with a steal. And quickly calls a timeout. Rather than risk the traveling violation, it'll be a short 30-second timeout. Good presence of mind by Haley Loman. Quick hands to get a hold of that ball. She fell flat on her stomach with it. And rather than risk the travel, she called rightly the timeout. It'll be just a short one. It'll be a chance for Ernie Kuntz to get his charges in line here for a final stretch run to see if they can eliminate that four-point Loringo Lady Rams lead. My guess is to look for Tori Bishop down low. She had a pretty good free throw shooting third quarter. She's not been to the line so far in the fourth. But the outside shooting probably isn't the St. Clair Panthers' number one chance and number one choice right now. Is to take that ball to the hoop, see what they can get from underneath, see if they can't get the Ringo Lady Rams in a little bit more foul trouble. 17 fouls for the Panthers, six for the Lady Rams, four point Ram lead at 53 49. Corey Bishop did not choose to drive Taylor Gensler from about 18 feet, and it's in Taylor Gensler. First points of the night for Taylor Gensler. That is unusual. I didn't know she hadn't scored. Another long, long three-pointer by Alana Rosanovich. 12 points tonight for her on four three-pointers. Susan McLean finds Taylor Gensler underneath, blocked, and that'll be a foul, two-shot foul on Jamie Meltzer. 
That's only her second. Seven team fouls and Taylor Gensler at the line shooting two. Her second, team seven. Taylor Gensler at the line two. First one's up and rolls off, no good. Morgan Malinick, number 50 for the Panthers, checks back in. Susan McLean heads to the bench. Taylor Gensler up and that one's good. Three points for Taylor Gensler. That lead is back to four for the Ringgold Rams. Under two minutes to go now, 155. They're tipped away by Tory Bishop. Off the hands of Alina Selby and out of bounds. Inbounds under the own basket. That'll be Alana Rosanovich doing the inbounding. Man to man. On the inbounds play by the Panthers. Alina Selby with about an 18 footer and that drains that one through. Nice shot into some tough defense. That's 18 points for Alina Selby. 58, 52, six point Ringo lead. Panthers need to get a decent shot here. Taylor Gensler with that decent shot and it comes off low. Tory Bishop with a rebound and held by Tabitha Leach. It'll be one and one, not a, she would, not a shooting foul. It was on the floor. Tory Bishop though with the clock stopped. That's what you want to be able to do is score points with the clock stopped. Tory Bishop for one and one. First one's up and no good off the front of the rim and rebounded by Tabitha Leach. Alina Selby drives into Tory Bishop, does not go to another hugely long three-pointer. Alana Rosanovich, these are NBA three-pointers she's draining. That's five for her tonight. And well, I sure don't know about these offensive fouls. I that defense was not set. Grace Highland called for that offensive foul. Two fouls for her, eight team fouls. And Ringo, I don't know where Cam has come up with a nine point lead with just over a minute to go in this contest. Grace Highland still leading all St. Clair Panther scores with 17 points. Tory Bishop. 15 on the basis of that 11 point third quarter outpouring she had for the Ringgold Lady Rams 18 by Alina Selby 15 in five three pointers by Alana Rosanovich the senior guard number senior I guess she's a guard she's 5'11 but she's playing guard and taking three pointers like that that's some pretty good shooting, if you ask me, for a tall female basketball player. Nine point lead for Ringgold and the ball with 109 left. Panthers full court pressure. The ball gets knocked away, but a pre uh, the, the old habeas grab is called on Grace Highland. That's her third. 19 fouls. That'll be a one and one shooting foul. One a bonus for Tabitha Leach. For the Lady Rams. That was way up. They've got some shooting coaching here. These shots are going way, way up in the air. There's no flat shooting here. That first one was good. She'll get a second, and it's a 10 point lead at 62 52. Same form, same result. Nine points all in this fourth quarter for Tabitha Leach. The lead is 11, 63, 52. Just under a minute to go now in the contest. Grace Highland with the ball. Morgan Malinick way out front. She likely not, but Grace Highland does. Back of the room, no good. And tapped out of bounds by Alana Rosanovich. Ball will belong to the Panthers. 44 seconds left and an 11 point deficit. Grace Highland. The ring gold defense not going to allow a three point shot. I heard the coach say that. Morgan Minnick, a little rattles one off the rim, no good. And Tory Bishop with a foul. 
Pushed Alina Selby out of bounds. Tori Bishop with her third. And that'll be 10 team fouls. And it's still be a two shot. To be the two shot foul by Alina Selby. Already with 18 and she's got a chance for two more. The rattles off, no good. She'll get one more. Pretty good free throw shooting for Ringle. Once they got to the line, they did not get to the line of the first half. That one's down for Alina Selby. Two or three from the line for her. Six of eight overall for the Lady Rams. Morgan Blink does take a three-pointer, rattles off the rim, no good, gets her own rebound back. In the lane, the little runner off the front of the rim, no good. Tori Bishop with the rebound, gets it out to Haley Loma with 18 seconds to go. Taylor Gensler with a three. Rim no good, Morgan Blink knocked away by Tabitha Leach. Ball stays in St. Clair's hands, 12 seconds to go. Three-pointer by Grace Highland, rim no good. Morgan Malinick with the offensive rebound, up and in with that one. Morgan Malinick. Two more for her, that's six on the night. And that is pretty much where it ends. That was an interesting contest in the fourth quarter. Ringgold came alive with four scores and they end up running away with it by a 10-point margin, 64-54, but it was a lot closer than that as this game progressed. Well, we're glad you're with us tonight. That puts the Panthers at one and one in section. Same thing with the Ringgold Lady Rams. Panthers have a three and three overall record. We're glad you were with us, everybody. Thanks for watching tonight. My name's Kevin McGahee. My camera person tonight has been Caroline Cherub. Thanks for watching Cable 7 and stay with us for a lot more girls basketball all season long. Thanks everybody and good night. <laughs>